salvation is a greek word which means to save to deliver to preserve to protect first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of tongues be made for all men this was paul instructing pastor timothy and he told timothy timothy look first of all supplications prayers intercessions giving of thanks all kinds of prayers be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior this is good this is acceptable in the sight of god our savior why because he will have all men to be saved he wants to have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth he wants all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth for there is one god and one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time that's the entire plan of salvation that's god's plan for mankind that's god's project for humanity to have all men to be saved and secondly to come to the knowledge of the truth that's why the church is created to bring men to the knowledge of the truth we get them saved out there we bring them in here and equip them with the knowledge of the truth if you're understanding shout i hear him so that's god's heartbeat that's the plan of god god doesn't give you things god doesn't give you things the ultimate of god is not to give you things because you can get things without god you can get things without god most of the people you know that are stinkingly rich don't even know god they have jets they have choppers they have yachts they have houses by the seaside they've got money they don't know god they don't even care about him they don't even think he exists so you can get things without god so god doesn't give you things god gives you himself now that's big he doesn't give you things he gives you himself when god wants to give you anything he gives you himself he doesn't give you stuff because anybody can get stuff so he gives you himself because when you have him with him you have everything that he created that is why the greatest knowledge is the knowledge of god if any man glory let him not glory in things let him not glory in men but let him glory in these that he knows me that who will have all men to come to the knowledge of the truth that's the greatest that's why when you come to church what we what we are committed to do is to just reveal god to you teach you about him reveal jesus to you make you see him and know him because when you know him and see him that's all that matters every other thing will follow amen i said amen praise god the book of first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 the word of god there tells us uh, they had no temptation taking you but such as is common to man but god is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to be a it so he's talking about temptation he's talking about testing he's talking about the trying of your faith because when it comes to temptation we're talking about the trying of your faith and uh, you know trials come all the time we go through tests we go through trials we go through temptations and now paul is saying none of them is special no temptation no trial it doesn't matter what you're going through nothing is special it's common to man not common to christians common to man whether christians or not christians trials are common whether you serve god or you don't serve god you'll be tried so it's even better you serve god because then you know that you are secured in the trial he said but god is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above what you can handle and he will with the temptation make a way of escape what is the way of escape he gives you the ability to endure endure means to to to, to persevere it's common to man whatever you're going through 
whatever is happening around you is common to man and in god's great salvation plan for you he has ensured that nothing will ever come your way that is bigger than you god is faithful he will not allow you to be tempted above what you can handle and even with the temptation he will give you the capacity to endure it that is the temptation will come and it will pass and you will still be standing he will give you what it takes he is faithful that is the great plan of god that mekato nekea your 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 adventure in life will not end in shambles it will end in glory because he called you and justified you and glorified you the end product of salvation is glory the sufferings of christ and the glory that shall follow no man or child or daughter of god is permitted to end up on a note of shame for whosoever believeth shall not be ashamed that's the great plan of god that's the plan of salvation and he wants all men to come to the knowledge of this truth that no temptation has taken you but such as is common to man touch your neighbor and say it's common to man tell somebody this is common to man whatever this is is common to man amen the book of first peter chapter 5 verse 8 we're building something it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour seeking whom he may devour now if the devil cannot devour peter wouldn't have given it to you as a warning he said be sober be vigilant because there's an adversary whose mission is to look for who to devour that means there are people he will devour and peter said look be sober be vigilant because you have an adversary the devil who goes about seeking for whom he may devour then he gives you the key he says whom resist steadfast you've got to be steadfast in resistance you don't go on vacation resisting is a consistently constantly a constantly constant thing you do whom resist steadfast how do you resist him in the faith you stay in the faith constant in and out of season you stay in the faith it looks like it's working it looks like it's not working you stay in the faith you don't ever quit you don't ever give up you don't ever cow out you don't ever surrender resist steadfast in the faith can somebody shout hallelujah so it means satan therefore can take advantage of ignorance and he can take advantage of unbelief that's why peter said you resist him in the faith in the faith inside this faith that that has been given to you by the gospel this faith that has been given to you by the gospel you stay in this faith and resist steadfastly that's the quality steadfastly in and out of season you resist you stay in a position of resistance and let the devil know there's no breathing space for him you are not that type that is devoured you are the one to resist it's not god that resists him for you you resist but god gave you the currency of resistance steadfast in the faith in in the faith given to you you stay in there and resist and don't take a no for an answer and don't let the devil mess around somebody shout i hear you somebody shout i hear you so we're dealing with two things here we're dealing with lust and we're dealing with evil because that is the bait that is the bait every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust that is the bait lust which is desire and evil and that's why this need to resist because the devil plans his evil around your lust so since you are a creature of desire every human being you are not a human if you don't have desire every human being has desire including jesus the man he has desire that's why he was tempted in all things because he has desire it's just that he refused to bow to the temptation so every man has desire and the devourer the devil 
will try to set up his trap around the object of your desire or around your desire and then peter is saying you resist him steadfast you stay in the faith don't ever get out of faith you stay in the faith and let the devil know there ain't no room for you here amen i said amen so two things we are dealing with lust and desire the evil that comes you resist it whenever the devil brings evil around you you resist him and the scripture guarantees he will flee except you don't resist there is nobody that has ever resisted satan and satan said i will not go when you resist him it is written he will flee the only reason why he has not gone is because he's not being resisted when you resist the devil he will flee so peter said whom resist steadfast in the faith you resist him let him know he can't get anything let him know he's just wasting his time as far as you're concerned you're sold out you're committed to god and as far as you're concerned god has got your back and as far as you're concerned you will never take defeat because it is not in your dna and as far as you're concerned you win all the time even when you're on the ground you're still winning on the ground you lose nothing somebody's not hearing me i say you lose nothing the blood of a champion is inside you what is inside you the blood of a champion you win all the time in the dream you win in the physical you win even when you are sleeping you win somebody shout i win all the time that's the great salvation of god or that's the great plan of salvation that god has for your life can somebody shout hallelujah and this faith has been given to us freely god has dealt to every man the measure of faith it's been given freely you don't have to fast and pray to get faith you don't have to struggle to get faith it's been given to you freely how do we know it's been given to you jesus is the author and the finisher and he lives in you jesus the faith is living in you so you have the faith of god who is jesus the person of faith on your inside so you don't have to try to get faith you just discover what is on your inside it's in you jesus is faith personified he's the author he's the finisher of faith the whole of faith is in jesus when jesus came inside you the faith came inside you so with the faith in you you resist and when you are resisting it's not you resisting is the faith and the faith is jesus and satan can't say no to jesus that's why i say when you resist him in the faith he will flee he has no option he will flee amen hallelujah all right so let's get into let's get into this praise the lord first corinthians chapter 10 look at verse 14 Paul is speaking here to the church at Corinth. He says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. My dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Just after he finished talking about temptation and that God is able, he will make a way of escape. He now says to them, My dearly beloved, implying that i'm not talking to unbelievers now i'm talking to brethren i'm talking to those that jesus has purchased i'm talking to those that have accepted this great plan of salvation my dearly beloved flee from idolatry flee flee from idolatry verse 15 i speak as to wise men judge you what i say so now he is speaking to wise men in scripture when you hear the word wise men he means matured i'm addressing matured people i'm not talking to babes so when you hear idolatry it is not what you're thinking because now i want you to think like a matured man flee from idolatry now i'm going to take you to some very 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 heavy stuff so i need you to wake up because i want to talk about some things now because what paul is about to address is to wise men to the matured he's not talking to babes now he said i'm talking to you as wise men flee from idolatry i'm not talking to babes i'm talking to the matured so what is this idolatry that paul is talking about here flee from idolatry he didn't say walk away from it he said flee from it <laughs> the word flee is not even wrong 
disappear from it are you with me i said are you with me look at verse 15 i speak as to wise men judge you what i say 16 the cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of christ the bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of christ so he's not talking about flee from idolatry he now says i'm talking to wise men then he now says, judge what i'm saying then he moves immediately to talk about the communion table that means he wants to deal with issues that affects the body he begins to talk about the communion and the word communion is the greek word koinonia koinonia means participation it means to 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 rob it means is you know the, actually the, the the literal meaning of the word koinonia is intercourse it means an exchange so he's talking about is it not the intercourse of the body of christ or the exchange or the intimacy that happens in the body of christ he's dealing with a very serious issue here now he's dealing with the issue of communion he's dealing with the issue of intercourse he's dealing with the issue of the intimacy in the body that's what he's dealing with here and he wants wise men to listen carefully but before he got into communion he first said flee from idolatry flee from it hallelujah when he said idolatry what was he talking about look at verse 19 <laughs> what say i then we are still on the same in the same context what say i then that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything he is saying look there is nothing like idols idols don't exist it's nothing there's nothing like it it's nothing like idols but you just said flee from idolatry so that means what paul is talking about is not idolatry in the sense you think of it in your village because now he comes down here to to qualify what he's trying to say he said look idols are nothing they don't exist in fact there are no idols there are no idols those things people go to in the village is just because they are stupid there are no idols they're victims of ignorance so when he says flee from idolatry he's not talking about a shrine he's not talking about something in the village where people go to he's not talking about one small altar where they tie things and people no that's not what paul is talking about and listen he's talking to wise men here in fact paul went a little further to open up this subject in first corinthians 8 verse 4 as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols we know we know oh my goodness i said we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other god but one that's to say there are no idols they don't exist in fact in fact nothing like idols is in existence but it's because we know we know you put a shrine i will not pray i will carelessly use my legs and scatter it i won't even think about it when i'm scattering it and i don't care how many heads of cows and how many heads of goats and how many human babies they killed and sacrificed on that i will kick it carelessly i don't even need to pray about it because there are no idols there are no idols how many shrines have i pulled down in my life without even knowing even human shrines i have pulled them down human shrines that have the tendency to physically attack you i have pulled them down because there are no idols and because i know 
I have stripped open a poor masquerade that people run away from. An entire village, everybody was hiding in the room. I, I was outside. Let them come. Remove those things. And I discovered they were wearing t-shirt and wrapper. That they were human beings. There are no idols. You're not hearing me. That they bury goat under your building. That is why the business will prosper. Because they didn't bury anything. There are no idols. That somebody opened, brought chicken and put the feather of chicken around your door. And the chicken is lying down. When you wake up in the morning, just carry broom and clean it. There are no idols. Not it. Okay, boja kalana. Am I teaching here? If you're hearing me shout, there are no idols. Okay, so Paul is saying, we know. We know. <laughs> that there are no gods. The gods are dead. There's only one God. Amen. How many gods? One God. We know that. So Paul is dealing with something here. He's telling you that, look, idols don't exist. When I'm talking about flee from idolatry, I'm not talking about idol worship. Because there's nothing like idols so that you understand where I'm going. I'm not talking about those things people go and do in the village because I immediately we say flee from idolatry. Many of you say it doesn't concern me because I have never been to one. So Paul is saying, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about idols here. I'm not talking about shrines here. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 17. Then Paul begins to talk about a picture here. And we want to paint it quickly. For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar. What say I then? That the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything but i say that the things which the gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to devils and not to god and i would not that you should have fellowship with devils so obviously the corinthian church was a mixed breed of of jews and gentiles it was a mixture because he talked about the Israel in the flesh, the Jews, and he talked about the Gentiles. So the Corinthian church was a mixture of Gentiles and Jews. And that's why when Paul was addressing them, he addressed them in their categories within one local assembly. Are you together with me? So Paul now is talking about, you know, dealing with the Passover, the communion. And when he was dealing with the communion, he got to deal with something very important. He got to deal with something that has to do with idolatry. Look at verse 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than him? All things are lawful for me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me but all things edify not he shows you that there is nothing called idols at all and he he, 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 he he makes it clear that the people that know that idols don't exist are people that have knowledge he's dealing with a group of people here that have knowledge that have an understanding that there's no such thing that they don't exist can I hear your amen? So now let's find out what Paul is trying to say here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, again, verse 4, where we came from. As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that the idol, an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven, or in earth as there be gods many and lords many but to us there is but one god the father of whom are all things and we in him and one lord jesus christ by whom are all things and we by him verse 7 how be it there is not in every man that knowledge how be it even though we know that there are no idols every man does not have that knowledge so those who do not have that knowledge are bound by 
idols but we know that there is nothing like that how be it every man does not have this knowledge somebody say i hear all right follow me for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled so now look at me everybody paul now is opening up something very beautiful here he's saying that you know what conscience is knowledge your conscience is as strong as your knowledge and your conscience is as weak as your ignorance so those that have not this knowledge they think that there is an idol so when they give them food sacrifice to idols when they eat they are defiled because of the weakness of their conscience which is a byproduct of their ignorance but we know so even if you bring a goat that is sacrificed to idols and you make pepper soup i eat it with thanksgiving and i walk away and i feel nothing because my conscience can handle it by knowledge i'm teaching good here knowledge very critical very critical knowledge you can beat it look at the next verse you will love this hallelujah verse 8 but meat commended us not to god for neither if we eat are we the better neither if we eat not are we the worse <laughs> are you still here verse 9 but take it lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak take heed be careful verse 10 for if any man sees thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols and through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom christ died through your knowledge the weak brother will perish for whom christ died this is serious now remember paul is talking to the wise he said look you know that there are no idols and you know that idols don't exist you have that knowledge but some don't have it so therefore when you see meat sacrificed to idols offered to you to eat and you sit down to eat it because you know that there are no idols the brother who does not have that knowledge watching you eat it will also go and eat it but he is eating it in the weakness of his conscience so he is defiled therefore your knowledge has encouraged a brother whom christ died for to be wounded now we're dealing with some things here so therefore i can eat meat sacrificed to idols and i feel nothing but if there is a brother there that is weak i will not eat it i'm not eating it because it will hurt me no i'm avoiding it to help my brother who is weak seller <laughs> i love brother paul man that guy that guy paul you're too much are you there verse 12 but when you sin so against the brethren and wound their conscience you sin against christ you didn't hear so let me read it again but when you sin so against the brethren and wound their conscience you sin against christ wherefore if meat make my brother to offend i will eat no flesh while the world standed lest i make my brother to offend are you there so now paul is showing us something and what is he showing us in chapter 9 of first corinthians get there chapter 9 next chapter um, verse 1 paul now began to talk as an apostle paul began to talk about his apostolic rights <laughs> his apostolic rights he says am i not an apostle am i not free have i not seen jesus christ our lord 
are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yea, doubtless I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are ye in the Lord. My answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? If you can eat and drink, me an apostle, shouldn't I eat and drink? If you can sleep, I an apostle, shouldn't I sleep? <laughs> Paul the apostle. <laughs> Verse 5. Have we no power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Kephas? If you can shake a sister, if you can hug a sister, we don't we have the power to hug and shake sisters? Don't we also have the right to marry wives? Now, Paul is trying to to examine issues that border on salvation where maturity is concerned. You are saved, no doubt. And you have understood that your salvation is eternally guaranteed. You are discovered. We've dealt with that. But let's get into other things that affect salvation. Because we're dealing with the entire subject. If you're understanding to this point with me, can I hear a very living amen in the heart? All right. Then Galatians 5.13. After Paul talked about his rights as an apostle. For brethren, you have been called on to liberty. For where the spirit of the Lord is... Uh -huh. so you have been called on to liberty only not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another you've been called to liberty but it is not liberty for you to use for your appetite your appetite but by love serve one another this is the work of faith this is the work of faith what we're dealing with here now is it as it concerns the work of faith now that you are in the faith how do you walk how do you live this is the work of faith you're saved now you're sure of your salvation so how do you now conduct your life that's what we're dealing with here he said, let not your liberty be used as an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Not an occasion for your appetite. First Peter 2.16 As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God we are free but we are not using our liberty as a cloak of maliciousness but now instead our liberty becomes an occasion for service instead of using this liberty to cause trouble everywhere we now convert the liberty as our instrument to serve I'm teaching now yeah we use it for service we're free we're liberated we have knowledge then the the proof of this knowledge will now be service that's a proof service am i teaching yeah that's a proof the liberty comes with a constraint of service it comes with a constraint of service. First Corinthians 9 15. Paul is talking. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory in void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid on me, and yea woe is unto me if i preach not the gospel for if i do this thing willingly i have a reward but if against my will 
a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me what is my reward then verily that when i preach the gospel i may make the gospel of christ without charge that i abuse not my power in the gospel for though i be free from all men yet have i made myself servant unto all that i might gain the more and unto the jews i become as a jew that i may gain the jews to them that are under the law as under the law that i may gain them that are under the law to them that are without law as without law being not without law to god but unto the law to christ that i may gain them that are without the law now so paul is dealing with issues here that concerns maturity as you grow in your walk in the faith when i go to those with, with the law i act like one that is with the law that i may win them when i go to those without the law that's my territory i function with them that i may win them i have not allowed my liberty to become a stumbling block to anybody instead i have converted my liberty as an instrument to serve the brethren am i teaching yeah because someone say you know we are free 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 go home and slap your wife bah after all nothing can change it i'm born again i'll go to heaven i'll soon show you something i'll soon show you something. are there wise people here all right so we're dealing with the matured verse 27 of the same chapter where we are but i keep under my body paul is still talking on this same subject well i keep under my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i have preached to others i myself should be a cast away the word cast away here means disqualified say i put my body under i put my appetite body here is talking about appetite i put my appetites under so that after i have preached to people i will not be disqualified he said i will be a castaway i'll be disqualified if i refuse to put my body under if i exercise my full liberty if i exercise my liberty i will be disqualified so therefore in order for me not to be disqualified i put my appetites under even though i know i have the freedom to do some things i will not do them so that i do not get the risk of disqualification teaching i won't get disqualified i won't get disqualified so chapter 10 first corinthians verse 1 moreover brethren i will not have you ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all of them passed through the sea and were all baptized and they all ate communion pastor Bruce, they were baptized they ate communion yet with many of them god was not pleased so god allowed them to perish they ate communion they were baptized unto moses yet god allowed them to perish that means you can eat communion and die young that you are eating communion is not a guarantee because they ate they drank they were baptized yet they died in the wilderness paul is fixing some things here paul is fixing some things here. <laughs> in fact look at verse 4 and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them the rock followed them the rock was a mobile rock when you read the old testament you will never see a rock following them the rock was stationary they drank and left it but when paul was opening up mystery he said the rock was following them that everywhere they went the rock was there and they were drinking from it look at the next verse 
but with many of them god was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness they ate communion they were baptized they did everything they ate the passover they were overthrown in the wilderness less after i have preached to others i myself will be disqualified why because i have refused to bring my appetite under chichi okay come with me we're still dealing with this chapter 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 10 verse 14 we are for my dearly beloved flee from idolatry that's where we started so look at this chapter 8 of first corinthians chapter 9 of first corinthians chapter 10 of first corinthians the thought of paul there is how he has waived his rights in love he has waived his rights in love he has waved it off my wife insulted me and spoke uselessly to me nothing was tying my hand from cleaning her face and removing that stupid thing from her mouth but when i thought of the love of christ my hand was chained and instead of slapping her i looked at her and i said i love you excuse me i put my body under a brother in the church did me uselessly i should have arrested him and locked him up on friday night in the cell <laughs> because you know that when you put a man inside cell on friday he will be there till monday and this kind of weekend is a bad weekend because even monday is public holiday so it's tuesday he will come out no matter who is believing but i looked at the brother i smiled and i said brother i will talk to the pastor about it why i put my body on so i don't risk disqualification you know that's why some believers when you see them their christianity smells they just smell they speak in tongues so they are born again but they are smelling smell they eat communion and everything but they still smell paul said look we have been called to liberty we've been liberated but there is a law higher than the law of knowledge the law of love what paul is dealing with here is trying to show you that no matter your knowledge knowledge cannot beat love love is higher the knowledge I'm going to show you something here are you getting blessed hey everywhere is quiet are you getting blessed yeah we're talking to the wise first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 27 now so idolatry therefore in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 14 what paul means here by idolatry is when you put your appetite and desire ahead of another brother when you put your appetite and desire ahead of another brother you're an idol worshiper anytime you are personal appetite becomes more important than the life of your brother whom christ died for you are an idolater a sister in the church is hungry no food to eat and she comes to you sister i'm hungry i'm not saying i need house rent i'm not saying i need school fees not even capital for business i'm hungry please help me 
you look at her and you say I'm about to pay for a truck if I remove 10 naira from the money I cannot pay for that truck go away I don't have that's what Paul is dealing with here you are using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness you are putting your appetite ahead of a brother's life and there are people like that there are people like that that's why you hear some people say ah, in that our church there is no love you know why they say so because people have come to liberty and they are using their liberty to wound one another for whom Christ died Now that doesn't mean also that you should not become a begging case. Because now when you become a begging case, you yourself, you're using your liberty to wound the brethren for whom Christ died. All right, so let's get back. Am I teaching? Okay. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah so verse 27 if any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and you be disposed to go whatsoever is said before you eat asking no question for conscience sake but if any man say unto you this is offered in sacrifice unto idols eat not for his sake that showed it and for conscience sake for the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof <laughs> I love brother Paul. You know what Paul is saying here? Paul is saying, look, if an unbeliever say, come to my birthday party, go. Don't say it's an unbeliever. Go. Attend the party. Some of you, the reason why you have nobody to evangelize is you have used holier than thou attitude to drive everybody away from you. When we say go for evangelism, you don't know where to go because you drove all of them. We are not the light of the church. We are the light of the world we need unbelieving friends because it is easier to win them as friends don't isolate yourself don't isolate yourself you need to make friends with them because that is where your light will shine when they are your friends and they complain of headache you lay hands then when they are healed they see your light when they are going through a marital crisis because they are your friends you advise them well when their problem is fixed they see your light let your light so shine not before the church but before men i'm teaching now uh, he, he said take the whole world and give me jesus that's a stupid song jesus said go to the world so if you are sent to the world why are you asking them to take it away we are sent to the world we need the world we need them it is when you are among them that this knowledge you have can be expressed i'm teaching now we need the world don't take the world give me the world because i have what it takes to save them i have the message teaching good yes so if they ask you to come for party go anything they give you it don't ask questions it is when you ask questions that you will know what is there just eat they bring meat just eat anywhere it's coming from eat it thank you lord jesus they bring drink drink it thank you lord jesus but if they bring meat and somebody in the party walk to you and say that meat is sacrificed to idol don't eat it why will you not eat it for the conscience of the person that came to specifically warn you for his conscience teaching good he said because you you know that the earth is the lord so you can eat it and not help but for his conscience don't eat it are you getting are you getting the picture are you getting the picture because it's important to get this now this is foundation for something that is coming up this is not the message this is the found the message is still coming because there are some things you need to see from corinthians and we're going to deal with them 
Praise the Lord. All right, follow me. I'll soon be done with this. So Paul is bringing to our knowledge a higher law, the law of love. You know, and um, this is where people ask questions like, can a Christian drink alcohol? That's a very terrible question. Can a Christian drink alcohol? When you hear a brother start asking that kind of question, the brother is in need of help. <laughs> that brother is in need of help because that should not be a question. Asking that question is a temptation. You shouldn't be asking such a question. <laughs> no. Don't be asking that kind of question. Amen. Because whether you drink or you drink not, it changes nothing. But I was invited to a gathering somewhere and they know who I am and they brought alcohol. They know who I am, but they brought alcohol. Then when they came to open it, I asked the person, uh, what's that? He said, it's wine. I said, check, is there alcohol in it? He said, 18%. I said, don't open it. Don't open it. Pour water for me. Because as he was opening it, he was watching me. He was watching me. To see if pastor will drink this, then we can drink and lie down on the ground. <laughs> Don't open it. I won't drink it. Because if I drink it, I will wound you by giving you the license to drink and be useless. So I won't drink. My liberty will not be an occasion for the flesh. I put it under. Why? Not because I drink. Now, so that's not a question. Whether a brother can drink alcohol is not a question. I have finished answering. Whether we eat or we don't eat, it doesn't change anything. But I will refuse to use my liberty to license somebody to sin. It's like a brother is trying to get married to a sister. Then he takes her to his house. We are redeemed. We are redeemed. We are redeemed. We'll marry next month. Sleep in my house today. The people in your compound know you are not married. You are wounding people. You are using your liberty to destroy people. You don't do that. You don't do that. You don't wound somebody for whom Christ died. If you do that, you are an idolater. You are, you are serving your appetite. You are not serving Christ. That is what Paul meant by flee from idolatry. Idolatry here in the context is servicing my appetite at the detriment of another person. I'm teaching here now. Like somebody comes to me and says, oh, Papa, I'm planning to get married. There's a person I want to marry and I say, oh... Ba, 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 ba. and after asking questions okay what I, I don't think you should rush it why don't we wait a little bit because from what i'm seeing here we need to pray and think a little bit and the person walks out of my office and says papa does not understand there are no gods the gods are dead there is only one god i'm going to marry waiting wait for waiting i'm not going to wait you disobey me you reject instructions you reject spiritual authority you go and get married you're an idolater you're an idol worshiper because what you have done is at the detriment of yourself and you have resisted the counsel of god to serve your appetite and there are people like that that are callous when they hear this kind of teaching they go out of control we are liberated we are the spirit of the lord is this liberty is not madness this liberty is supposed to be an instrument of service an instrument of what i'm going to show you from scripture it's supposed to be now now that we are free so we use it productively to advance god's counsel if i'm teaching say i hear you so why come don't come don't waste my time i've got more important things to do with my time than sit down with you and waste my time some people come, we give them counsel. They start crying. Why are you crying? 
Why are you crying? Did I beat you? Advising you for the security of your future and you are crying. Why are you crying? I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. When they land you slap, your eye will clear. Are we here? If I'm teaching, shall I hear you? We're fixing things here. So Paul now is dealing with this because it's very important. Because some people will just say, well, 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 well. He's bringing to our focus that love is higher than knowledge. It is the love law. Amen? Love will always consider the other person. Always. Always. Love will consider the other person. So chapter 8, the love law. Chapter 10, the love law. Chapter 9, in fact, Paul said, I will even act as if I am under the law, even though I am not under the law, so that I can be a blessing. Chapter 10, he said, For there are, there, he said, We have those who believe that there is food sacrificed to idols. So even though I can eat the food sacrificed to idols, when I see the weak, I will not eat it. So I can be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Life is about affecting others. And life is about impacting others. Because when you meet people and leave them, they remember you for two things. Either the problems you cause or the solutions you provide. You can never walk out of your people and leave them the way you met them. You must impact them one way or the other. And I would rather be a blessing than be a cause. Teaching? Hallelujah. So as we grow, we now begin to discover that even though we have liberty to do some things, we would rather not do them because we love the brethren. Somebody shout, I love the brethren. Can I hear you say it again? Can I hear you shout it louder? So when you sin against a brother, huh, you have wounded Christ. We read that. Every time you sin against a brother or you hurt a brother, because you are a liberated person that liberty of yours has aided in wounding christ you know yeah I was it within the week i was teaching that some people think saul saul of tassos god gave him a special gospel there was no special gospel for saul he was not specially saved saul was not specially saved there was nothing special about saul's salvation somebody said but god kept, came and slapped him in the afternoon it was not god was not slapping Saul to save him he was slapping him to stop him from persecution because the moment he hit him on the ground he said Saul Saul why persecutors so the intention was not to save him was to interrupt because he has persecuted the church so much and I'm sure the brethren have come together in prayer and asked God to deal with Saul so in God answering the prayer of the church he grabbed the guy put him on the ground and said why are you what have I done to you? Why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, but who are you? Who are you that I persecute? He said, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. He said, please, what will you have me do for you? He asked, he demanded for salvation. If he didn't demand for it, he would have warned him not to persecute him and left him alone. But he demanded. That is why when he was testifying to Agrippa, he said, we are upon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. That means when I had the opportunity, I grabbed it. Am I talking to somebody here? So there was nothing special about Saul. It was just that God had to stop him from persecution. But look at it. He said, why do you persecute me? Not why do you persecute them? That means the persecution was against Christ. Not against them. Not brethren. Even though it was through the brethren, but it was getting to Christ. When you hurt a brother in the church, you are hurting Christ. Why are you laughing? Don't use your liberty as an occasion for the flesh. Flee from idolatry. If I'm teaching, shout, I hear you. Flee from idolatry. This is not in Exodus, this is in Corinthians. This is a church where grace was preached. This is the apostle of grace putting things in order under grace. 
Some say, well, we're under grace. I won't give my offerings anymore. I will not pay tight anymore. I'm under grace. Hey, hey, you are not under grace. You are lascivious. Grace teacheth us. Titus 1 11, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all. Verse 12, teaching us, grace is a teacher. When you really receive grace, it starts teaching you to walk in the way of the Lord. It enables you, it empowers you. Am I teaching here? Please, if you're hearing me, shout, I hear you. Titus 1 11 and 12, it teacheth us to do what? It teacheth us to be a blessing. It teacheth us to use our appetite as an occasion. To serve the brethren somebody shout i hear you i'm not hearing you can i hear you louder can i hear you loudest one of the things that the new creation does is it takes away selfishness when you are born of god one of the things spiritual birth does is to take away selfishness how the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost that love of god shed abroad in our hearts takes away selfishness because where selfishness is love is not where love is selfishness is not love and selfishness cannot coexist the love of god where we prefer one another where we serve one another where we prefer others to ourselves where we're willing to deny ourselves to be a blessing to others where we give up our rights so that others can be edified i'm teaching here now where we don't entertain our appetites at the expense of a brother or sister where i deny myself some things so that others can be edified built up encouraged so that others can see the light of christ now there's a greater glory ahead your life will never diminish it will only multiply increase is upon your destiny you will never dim your, your light will never go dim in this life your light will shine brighter and brighter i speak to you by the grace of god that is upon my life every area of your life where grace has not yet affected i command grace to saturate you in the mighty name of jesus where you have made some mistakes i declare right now by this knowledge correction is taking place i'm not hearing that amen somebody can i hear that amen like thunder stand on your feet let me pray for you Turn to your brother or sister wherever you're standing. Grab the person. Tell him you're my brother. You're my sister. We are members of the body. We are one body. Hold your neighbor. Say we are one body. You are my body. I will not hurt you. I will protect you. I have your back. I will not gossip you. I will not backbite you. I will not put my selfishness my interests ahead of you i will prefer you to my appetite because the love of god in my heart prefers you to my appetite i didn't hear your amen. amen that's what it is you become more important than my desires so if my desires will hurt you i will put them aside okay then when you are not there i can enjoy my desires but when you are there i will not enjoy my desires why i prefer you to myself that's the love of god and every born again child of god is born of love god is love god is love god is love amen god is love we can't be eating the same communion body in all honesty and then i'm hurting you no it means i do not know what i'm doing that's why they ate the communion and they died i can't be eating that communion body with you and i see an opportunity that will make you better and give it to an unbeliever instead of you i cannot do that why you're my body whatever will make you better it is my job to give it to you am i teaching here i will not i will not hurt you 
I will not take advantage of you because you are Christ and I am Christ and two of us are Christ I love you and I will be a blessing to you whatever it takes I will be a blessing to you anything I know that will make you better when I have the chance I will make sure you have it anything but you know there are brethren who know what will make you better and they deny you because they are afraid that if you get it, you'll be better than them. Well, who is in competition with you? Ask your neighbor, are we in competition? Where is he starting from? Our birth dates are different. Uh, where are we starting the competition from? Somebody shout, there is no competition here. If you are better than me, it is my, it is my, it is my blessing that i have a better person in my family what are you talking about your increase is my increase your promotion is my if tomorrow you are the deputy governor i'll be happy that a brother in my church is the deputy governor that means if i need anything that has to do with government i will talk to my brother if my brother doesn't hear me i will tell papa papa will tell him why we're a member in family your progress is my progress that's why the jews are unbeatable the jews the natural jews are unbeatable a jewish person can never prefer any non-jew above his jewish brother even if that is jewish brother is not his friend the jewish people don't play games let me prophesy as your amen will come like thunder lift up those hands i decree in this nation we will be one of the most powerful set of people in the name of jesus god will carve out for you places of influence places of relevance because you will serve the body of christ because you will be a blessing to mankind because you will wipe away tears from those crying because you will be led to those that are lame you will be eyes to those that are blind because you will be led to those that are legless i decree in this building because you will be a blessing to the body of christ i prophesy over you today every place of influence we have god has carved out for you i release you to occupy it occupy it occupy it occupy it i declare what you need to affect mankind as your two hands are open i command it to be released to you ah god said to abraham i will make your name great and the scripture says if you be abraham's seed if you be christ then are you abraham's seed the same god that made your father abraham great baraka to kenya i prophesy upon you today that same greatness is upon your destiny it's upon your career it's upon your family it's upon your business it's upon the work of your hands ah when others are going down you will be going